For more on the economy in Japan, Nicholas Secheny from the Center of Strategic and International Studies. He's also De Deputy Director, Senior Fellow of the Office of the Japan Chair. Um, welcome to the show. We're talking about Japan, the economy, and it's controversial because, as we were talking earlier, people love it or they seem to hate it, at least investors do. So the question is, is Japan, the economy specifically, is it broken or does it still need to be fixed? I would say it's on the mend. Uh, this is Prime Minister Abe's second term in office. He was Prime Minister for a year from 2006 to 2007 and was widely criticized for not focusing on the economy at all uh, during his previous term. So he's wasted no time in just three months this time around uh, to project, uh, first of all, confidence in the potential for Japan to revive economically, uh, and then to lay out what he calls a three, the three arrows of Japan's economic revival. Uh, fiscal stimulus, uh, monetary easing to combat deflation, and then what he calls a growth strategy. I would interpret that uh, as structural reform. It sounds like Obama's plans, uh, part of it. There um, are parallels. So they're stimulus, they're doing the monetary thing, they're pumping more money into the system, they're doing the stimulus, they're buying, they're building new roads and bridges. All of that is good. Is it working? Well, I think it remains to be seen. Uh, skeptics might say that Japan has tried public work spending before, uh, and that uh, even though the current government just introduced a $1 trillion budget for the next fiscal year, uh, if that builds so-called bridges to nowhere, what's that going to do for uh, Japan in the long run? Um, so I think what people are watching is for signs of uh, a, a, a dedication to reform that leads to sustainable growth. And I think last week we saw an example when Abe announced that Japan was going to join uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade negotiations. Uh, if you get into an agreement like that, you open up your economy, it improves competitiveness, efficiency, and I think that's what people are looking for over the long run. So, so there's, there's growing confidence from the region and from the rest of the world, but there is still one controversy that Japan has not shaken off, and this is the yen debate, the yen policy. They've recently been criticized, a number, and most recently at the G20, that, and I'm saying their words, they have been accused of manipulating the currency to make it weaker rather than stronger because it would help their exports. Do you believe that's what Japan is doing? Well, I think, uh, you know, the G7 statement last month said that uh, markets would determine exchange rates and Japan is a member of the G7. Um, you know, it's a two-sided coin. On the one hand, sure, the yen depreciates and boosts exports, uh, but Japan's also in a situation where it's importing energy in the wake of the nuclear crisis in 2011. Almost all of its nuclear power plants are shut down. Yen depreciates, energy imports become more expensive. So it's kind of a mixed picture. Um, I think if, if the Abe government can pursue all three arrows, so to speak, uh, simultaneously, fiscal, monetary, and economic reform through trade liberalization, for example, uh, then we're going to see uh, uh, more signs of a long-term growth trajectory. Japan, uh, the third largest economy. More recently, they were the second largest economy. Nonetheless, it's a major economy in the world that's been somewhat ignored regionally. What is the biggest challenge for Japan to get back onto the radar, at least for investors? Well, I think, you know, Abe was here in Washington a couple of weeks ago, and, and the major theme for his visit was Japan is back. And I think we've heard about his domestic economic strategy. Uh, I think uh, together with that, he's got to pursue economic diplomacy throughout the Asia Pacific. TPP is one way to do that. Uh, they're also in discussions with China and Korea about perhaps doing something trilaterally. He's also made a visit to Southeast Asia and is trying to um, really sustain Japan's economic leadership role uh, with the ASEAN states. So he's got to project confidence, uh, engage diplomatically in the region, and I think if he succeeds over time, uh, we might see a less cynical uh, uh, approach to Japan. Well, part of that is the PR campaign, but there are some significant structural issues within Japan, and one of them that has been brought up a number of times, not necessarily by economists, but by sociologists, is the aging of Japan. They have one of the oldest workforce forces in the entire world, and there's real concern that as this workforce continues to get older, there's not enough young people to basically continue to put money into the system to pay for the healthcare system for the older generation. Is that something that you're looking at? I mean, ultimately, that will affect the economy. Absolutely. And I think one, one thing people are looking for uh, in terms of structural reform is whether uh, Japan pursues some sort of new approach to immigration uh, to address the demographic challenges more young that, people. You've, that, you've, uh, that you've pointed out. And that's a, a key issue that they're going to have to grapple with going forward. Nicholas Secheny, thank you very much. Deputy Director, Senior Fellow at the Office of Japan Chair.
Thanks for being on Biz Asia America. My pleasure. Thanks.